stage at CES. I'm Jason Heiner, Editor-in-Chief of Tech Republic, and with me I've got my longtime partner in crime, Bill Detweiler, Managing Editor, and the man who likes to take things apart. Uh, so today, we're going to crack open the Apple Pencil, right Bill? That's right, so if you haven't seen this already, this is the must-have accessory for the iPad Pro. This is Apple's yes. very large uh, iPad here, and this pencil is uh, really unique among styluses. What it allows you to do is it allows you to draw on, oops, it allows you to draw on the iPad, if I could, if it will work. Pick a tip, yep. So see like that, and it has some interesting sensors inside that allow yeah. it to detect the angle with which you're painting, allow you to detect the pressure which with you're using, so it makes small light lines or really thick dark lines. Um, and there's a lot of technology inside this that actually makes it function. So what we want to do is we want to actually show you guys what's inside and how it works. It's so, a pretty remarkable piece of technology. I mean, when we got one in, right, uh, our multimedia editor, uh, Aaron Carson, who's in the audience crying right now because we're about to crack it open, um, it, was, uh, it was something that she picked it up. Uh, she, unlike you and I, can actually draw and, uh, and quickly um, was very impressed with the technology um, that's indeed. in the pencil. It's a, it's a unique stylus um, and one that works really well. If you have an iPad Pro, you probably need one of these. Yes. Um, so let's get All cracking right. since we have a limited amount of time. Now, I do want to forewarn everyone. Um, normally when I take things apart, we try to take them apart in a way that we can put them back together again yes. in working order. I don't like to destroy my gadgets. I can't do that with the Apple Pencil. This is not made to be taken apart. Um, the, it is a sealed container. There are several layers, as I'll show you inside this. So I'm going to destroy this pencil as I take it apart. Um, so if you're not okay with that, you know, hide your eyes. Uh, but it should be fun. Also, there's no way to do this without cutting inside of the plastic. So I've got a handy vise here to hold a pencil. We've got a handy rotary cutting tool and a diamond wheel that we're going to use to slice through the plastic and the metal inside. Um, and we have some safety gear too. Usually I don't need safety gear when we do our cracking opens, yeah. but this time we've got a few safety glasses for Jason and I. I've got some safety gloves that we'll use when we start cutting this thing open. And we have... Katie over here with the fire extinguisher Just ready to go. Case. We will probably get a few sparks, um, a little bit of smoke uh, from the plastic, but we shouldn't have a fire. Um, all right, so let's, let's go ahead and let's get cutting. So the first Excellent. thing that we'll do is we'll remove the tip of the Apple Pencil, which is actually made to be removed. Inside the tip, there's actually a small piece of metal which interacts with this part of the pencil here, uh, which is a sensor which allows it to detect the pressure. Um, it also helps with detecting uh, the angle which of how the pencil is uh, held against the screen. We'll also remove the cap. Now these are both made to come off. The cap has the lightning connector. And with that, that's pretty much all that you can actually disassemble yourself with the Apple Pencil. And it actually does come with a replacement <coughs> tip uh, for it when you wear that one out. So we'll go ahead and we're going we're gonna to put this in the vise. And, we and have we're going like to... Oops. Um, at, uh, in our studio uh, at Tech Republic, uh, we have one, an even larger one. Um, than this, but you rarely have to use this, Bill, right? You don't use this hardly you, at all. Um, I mean, one of the reasons that you crack things open is to, to learn about what's inside, to learn about the design of these devices, and also to talk to our audience about um, if they are having to repair them and put them back together. So most of the things that you crack open, I can count, uh, we've been doing these since 2006, I can count on my, one hand the number of things you've actually broken over the right. years and made Easy unusable. This um, will be the exception here. This will be the exception. Right, this is the second one. You did do one of these already, we and they can see the gallery, yes. uh, a full gallery of photos on Tech Republic um, of all this, um, the process of cracking this open. All right, so let's go. We've got a diamond wheel here, and we've got our rotary tool, so we'll see how we can do here. Now, I'm going to do my best not to cut through the battery. There's a very small lithium-ion battery inside this, but it should be okay. It, oh. You could set, that is how you could actually get some sparks or flames, right, if you yeah. hit the battery. Yeah, we could actually. But it's so low voltage, it has such a small capacity that it shouldn't be too much of a problem. There's also adhesive in here. And normally I would bring a heat gun and try to heat the adhesive up, but we just, I'm just going to cut through it and do our best to peel it apart. Very good, very good. You can see I'm doing, I'm being very careful not to cut through, try to cut, not cut through the interior metal component. Yeah. If you are inclined to do some of these disassemblies on your own, um, 
there are a couple things to keep in mind. One, be very patient. You have to be very, very patient. Um, Bill uh, is incredibly patient with these things. If this was me, you know, when, when it comes to things like this, I tend to want to force it. You know, if it's not coming, if it's not working, I want to force it. And what happens is you, that's how you break something uh, and then it becomes, uh, you know, worthless, uh, unrepairable. So you have to be very patient. Don't force things. Um, and, you know, in this case, you should be pretty dexterous. Right? You should be pretty good with your hands. Bill kind of has the hands of a surgeon. Um, he has very steady hands uh, and he, uh, he is very light on, in the touch with these things. You can see he's being very light with the touch, just, bar just barely getting through this thing. So if you want to do these on your own, we recommend most people don't. You know, we do these so you don't have to. Uh, but if you do want to, those are the two most important things. Don't you agree, Bill? Oh, definitely. And now, so what I've done is I've actually cut through each side of the plastic housing, and I'm going to do my best to peel off the plastic housing here. And we have a, an array of tools that we use when we crack these things open. Yes. Some of them small. We have plastic prying tools. These are called spudgers. We have pliers. We have um, wire oh, snips. Goes. Oh, you can kind of hear it kind of crack there a little bit. And work our way around yeah. through the adhesive. You see, this thing is going to be completely toast. So I'm going to show you guys this here. Again, you can go to techrepublic.com and see a full gallery of all this um, uh, in action. Uh, when Bill did the original cracking open of this, he, he took photos of each step, which you typically do on all of yours. Uh -huh. You take a photo of every step, of every potential pitfall um, yep. if you were taking this apart. Um, and you also learn a lot about uh, these devices, what do you learn you know, when you do these uh, cracking opens? Well, one of, the, one of the reasons we do this is a couple things. To learn their weak points, to learn how they might fail in the future, so that people can learn better how to support them, how to take care of them. Um, so if people come to them and they ask them, hey, look, I've got this device. Is it a good device? Is it rugged? Is it sturdy? Uh, is it durable? We also like to learn how technology evolves over time. And by looking at the inside of the devices, we can see the chips, we can see how they're made, and we can see what manufacturers are doing yeah. when, the, um, you know, when they're developing new products. So as you can see, I've got the plastic off of this, the shell, and there's a second metal shell inside of this. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go ahead and we're going to have to uh, cut through that also. There's no way, I tried, I really did the first time I did this, I tried to remove the interior without cutting through the metal, but there was just no way to do it. That's why you get the diamond uh, That's why I use saw. the diamond wheel too. There's also extremely small uh, tri-wing screws or, uh, that, are, that are used inside the pencil. Now, why Apple put screws inside a device that was never meant to be taken apart, I have no clue. <laughs> it's extremely frustrating. So I'm going to try to get these out with one of the smallest tip screwdrivers that I have. I don't know if they'll come out. Okay. If they won't, we're just going to cut through them, okay. which we can do that too. Apple so, is one of the most frustrating devices to take apart. Uh, you know, they don't want you to take these apart. They want, they want to take them apart. They want you to take them into the, uh, to the Apple store. Um, they also use a lot of different size screws. That's another thing that's very that's frustrating. And, and throughout the years of cracking open lots of different devices, including Apple devices, Apple uses many different kinds of screws. So if you are trying this at home, you're not going to be able to just use your normal tools. You've got to have some specialized tools uh, to crack them open, um, like Penelope screwdrivers and things like that. Where can people get those if they have an interest in that? Uh, online. Most of the tools that we get, we order online and uh, you can pick up a lot of the specialized screws needed to take apart the Apple iPads and the iPhones and things like that. Yeah, this screw doesn't want to come, so I'm just going to cut right through the metal anyway. Right. So Pentalobe we're going to go ahead and do that. For Apple, you're going to need a pentalobe screwdriver is one of them. You can take a, um, you can do a search for that. Uh, you can get um, places like ifixit.com sell sets of tools that are, are quite useful. Um, and your, good, your handy Dremel, and a uh, Dremel. can also uh, be your best friend if you're interested in this kind of thing. All right, so we're going to get a little bit of a spark here, but it shouldn't, we shouldn't put my have fire. Yeah, on. Jason got your glasses on, all right. Ah, so there Ooh, we go. Here we go. Now we're talking. You guys see, can you guys see the sparks there? So another thing that, uh, you know, to keep in mind with these cracking opens is that we try to do the devices that are most in demand, that, that are 
the things that uh, are, are most common and that especially uh, business users, professionals, uh, are most likely to use. Uh, because of course Tech Republic, um, a sister site of CNET, uh, focuses on the technology that people use for work. So you can see all kinds of uh, devices that Bill has cracked open from um, iPads to um, the Microsoft Surface to all kinds of different phones. Um, and then every once in a while we do some fun things as well. Uh, things like a connected soccer ball uh, that has lots of uh, sensors and processors uh, in it, surprisingly. Um, what are some of the other fun things that you've done recently, Bill? Uh, what have we done? We've done the... Drones. Uh, we've done a Bebop Parrot Bebop drone. We've done a... Uh, the new Amazon um, Echo? Fire tablet. Oh, the fire We've tablet. done the Amazon Echo, which was a lot of fun. We're going to cut through the other side of this. All right, more sparks on the way. I'm doing my best not to cut through the circuit boards that are inside, not because we're going to be able to save them and use them for anything, but because I want to show them to you. Now, I'm also doing my best not to cut through the battery that's on the inside of this. Again, if you hit the battery with uh, something like this, that's when you really could set it on fire, potentially. So you have to be careful. Again, if you, you can kind of see that Bill's applying a really light touch to this. And that's one of the most important things with this kind of thing, is having a light touch. Don't force it. Um, you know, it's easier to go back and do something a second time than it is to uh, completely destroy the device if you're if you're too rough with it. Unlike this one. Hands of the surgeon, through. like I said, hands of the surgeon. So you can also find Cracking Open. Bill does uh, videos of these Cracking Opens as well that you'll find on CNET. Um, he does a special uh, version of the Cracking Opens that are in the CNET magazine. You can find the CNET magazines uh, around the booth for those of you in the live audience. Um, and you can also subscribe to CNET Magazine, but Bill does one of these for each of the CNET magazines as well, where it takes a bunch of these photos uh, and, and shows you uh, them in the print magazine. And then on techrepublic.com, you can find uh, the full complement of photos, often as many as you know, 40 or 50 photos you'll do for a lot of these, right Bill? Yep. We try to show people the process and then also show them the hardware inside. Yeah. All right, so we can hear the metal cracking apart here. We're going to try to bend it as best we can. This thing is really toast at this point. Yeah, it's a, this, is, this is one of the more difficult uh, devices that we actually cracked open this year. Yeah. We spent um, probably, I mean, well, you can see how long it's taken me, about 30 minutes or so to get, uh, it open. To get through the whole thing. I'll have to cut a little bit more. And a lot of times, you know, I talked about the patience. Wow, this thing really is sparking. Woo. Uh, <laughs> look, it's, there he goes, got a little battery. No, yeah. Check it out. Um, it smells like burnt popcorn up here now. Uh, <laughs> so I'm glad that actually we can see this because, um, because it does show the danger uh, of doing this. We got a little bit and, of smoke And there. how careful uh, you have to be. <laughs> I don't think it's the actual battery. It's yeah. Just a little bit of yeah. circuit board so, catching on fire. Um, earlier we cracked open uh, one of the hoverboards, you know, the, the hoverboards that don't actually hover, um, that have been uh, going up in flames uh, lately. Um, we cracked one of those open, and I think everybody was hoping that a little bit uh, we would see a few sparks or maybe some flames. Um, none for that, but on the Apple Pencil, uh, the, the battery did give us a little bit of smoke and some sparks there. Let's see if I can pull the metal off here. All right. Come on. So again, specialized tools, um, light touch, patience. Um, those are the things it takes uh, to do this kind of thing. Um, we also learn a lot about the, the design of these products um, when we do these things. Um, I remember a product that Bill, uh, from a very popular vendor, um, Bill had cracked open one time and he you know, said, come take a look at this. And he showed me and really inside it was a mess. Like the wires were, um, were all over the place. There was tape taping things down. 
and, uh, and, and it told us a lot that that product was really rushed to market um, and that the design was a bit haphazard. Uh, this was one of the uh, uh, tablets, uh, one famous tablets. And then on the other end, uh, I've seen Bill, you know, a number of times, Bill, you've talked about the fact that uh, um, devices from vendors especially, not surprisingly, like Samsung and Apple, mm -hmm. on the inside, uh, the design is often just as detailed as it is on the outside, it that uh, it, it does help show the, uh, the high quality of those devices and the fact that, um, you know, that they have engineering culture that is very serious about, um, about their design. Yeah, so what I'm going to show you guys here is now that we've got inside the pencil, I know it's very difficult to see, there is so much tiny tech inside yeah. of here that is, it's really surprising. It's one of the smallest circuit boards that I've actually ever seen here inside the pencil. Um, it's got a, I'll try to explain the different parts here. This is the lightning connector. Up here, there are antennas for the uh, Bluetooth uh, transmission back yeah. from the pencil back to the iPad. There's a battery. This is the very small lithium ion battery. It does look, it does look like that I nicked it there and that was what was causing the smoke. Yep. And then there's two circuit boards. These are circuit boards that are actually sandwiched together. This is another um, ARM Cortex. I believe it's an M3 processor in okay. there. Uh, made by ST Micro. Uh, and then down in here are the sensors uh, for the tip that help determine its angle against the, um, the face of the iPad Pro. And then the pressure that you're applying yeah. to the tip of it too. So there's really, you know, you can see there's two different metal shells. There's a whole other metal shell in here. I'm going to see if I can cut through. Do you guys want to see if I can cut through the other side too? Let me keep going. Okay. okay. Well, all I right. think we're, they're telling us that we have to wrap up here in a minute. I don't have a whole lot of time. But so you can actually anyway. see all the photos. You, yes. you did take this apart down to all the very bare details. You can see all the photos at techrepublic.com. That's right, yeah. They can see all the photos there and a whole video of the process of me actually cutting both sides off and taking it completely apart.